we want to find the area of the polygon joining the points A, B, C, and D. I've already plotted the points on the coordinate plane and sketched the sides of the quadrilateral. Again, our goal here is to find the area of this quadrilateral. One approach might be to cut the quadrilateral into two triangles, for example, by sketching the segment AC, then determining the area of the two triangles, and then summing the areas of the triangles to determine the area of the quadrilateral. However, this would be challenging because we'd have to find the length of the base and the height of the triangles in order to find the areas. Remember, the area of a triangle is equal to one-half base times height, or base times height divided by two. So in this case, I think it's going to be better to think outside the box. In this case, think outside the given quadrilateral. Let's inscribe the quadrilateral in a larger rectangle. To do this, the left side of the rectangle must include point A, go as high as point B, and as low as point D, and would look like this. The side on the right must include point C and look like this. The side along the bottom must include point D, and the side along the top must include point B. Because of the way it's situated on the coordinate plane, we can easily determine the area of the circumscribing rectangle using the formula length times width. Let's go ahead and find the dimensions of the larger rectangle. Notice how the bottom side is parallel to the x-axis, where the values go from negative 5 to positive 5, and therefore the length is 10. Of course, we could also count the units along the side to verify it is 10 units. And then for the length on the right side, notice how this side is parallel to the y-axis where the values go from negative 3 to positive 7. The length on the right is also 10. So in this case, we actually have a square that is circumscribing the given quadrilateral. From here, notice how if we find the area of the circumscribing square, it will be too much area so from here, if we subtract out the areas of the right triangles formed at the corners of the circumscribing square, the remaining area will be the area of the original quadrilateral. Meaning, once we find the area of the larger square, we will subtract out the area of this right triangle, this right triangle, this right triangle, and finally this right triangle. The area that's left will be the area of the given quadrilateral, shaded here in light blue. And it'll be easy to find the base and the height of the right triangles because of the way they're situated on the coordinate plane. And because we have right triangles, we use the lengths of the two legs for the base and the height. Let's go ahead and find those lengths now. For the triangle in the upper left-hand corner, Notice how the short leg has a length of 2 units. The longer leg has a length of 8 units. In the upper right-hand corner, the shorter leg has a length of 4 units. The longer leg has a length of 8 units. Remember, we know the length of the entire side of the square is 10 units. Notice 2 plus 8 is 10. And now for the right triangle in the lower right-hand corner, the short leg has a length of 3 units. The long leg has a length of 6 units. Notice 4 plus 6 is 10. And then finally, for the right triangle in the lower left-hand corner, the short leg is 2 units. 2 plus 8 is 10. The longer leg has a length of 7 units. 7 plus 3 is 10. So now we have all the dimensions that we need to find the area of the polygon formed using points A, B, C, and D. Our formula is going to be the area of the quadrilateral, A sub Q, is equal to the area of the circumscribing square which we'll call a sub s, and then minus the sum of the areas of the four red right triangles, which we'll call a sub t sub 1 plus a sub t sub 2 plus a sub t sub 3 plus a sub t sub 4. And now let's find all of these areas. So again, a sub q, the area of the quadrilateral, is equal to the area of the circumscribing square, which is 10 times 10 and then minus the sum of the areas of the four red right triangles. Starting in the upper left-hand corner, the area of the right triangle is equal to 1 half times 8 times 2. Remember, we use the two legs as the base and the height, and the order doesn't matter. Plus 
moving clockwise, the area of the right triangle in the upper right-hand corner is 1 half times 8 times 4, plus the area of the right triangle in the lower right-hand corner, which is 1 half times 3 times 6, plus the area of the right triangle in the lower left-hand corner, which is 1 half times 7 times 2. And now simplifying, 10 times 10 is 100, minus the sum of the products. 1 half times 8 times 2 is 1 half times 16 or 8, plus 1 half times 8 times 4 is 1 half times 32 or 16, plus 1 half times 3 times 6, which is 1 half times 18 or 9, plus 1 half times 7 times 2, which is 1 half times 14, which is 7. This gives us 100 minus 8 plus 16 plus 9 plus 7 is 40. 100 minus 40 is equal to 60. The area of the quadrilateral is equal to 60 square units. I hope you found this helpful.